Hi guys, this is War Jeepney's resident luck based gamer, the Silver Tongue Joskar Malakaman. And today, I will be talking to you guys about my Alchemist Guild. The Alchemists are masters of the condition game. They limit opponents' movement by spreading area of effect attacks that cause negative conditions when their opponents step on them. The Alchemists are led by Midas in Season 1 and here we see his cop with the three prong landing also known as the superhero landing and uh, the way you play Midas is like a superhero and uh, let's take a look at his stat card to uh, find out why so here we have Midas he has a decent move of 5-8 meaning he can um, jog 5 inches and then sprint 8 inches uh, his stack is pretty high at 6 that means he rolls 6 dice on attack uh, he has a kick of three, and um, so Midas has a decent move of five eight, which allows him to jog five inches and sprint up to eight. Now he's his stack is six, which is fairly high. I um, mean, and he has a kick of three eight, rolling three dice and reaching up to eight inches. His defense is five plus, and he has an armor of zero. Um, this is important because he only has 14 health and he can be a little bit squishy once he gets ganged up on. He contributes 4 influence to the influence pool and he can take in 7. Now when I mention Midas is a superhero, this is the focal point. Uh, he can pretty much do half of the team's actions for the turn. And so you have to make sure it'll be worth it. Midas also has the light-footed character trait. This allows him to ignore movement penalties uh, for rough ground. Uh, this is important when you're trying to isolate a target uh, for Midas to take out uh, or when someone is giving chase. So you can hide behind rough terrain and hope they won't reach you. Uh, he also has unpredictable movement. Uh, and this allows him to get out of combat basically uh, once per turn if they enter his melee zone uh, he can make a two inch dodge his heroic play is metallic skin it basically highlights how versatile Midas is it can either give him plus one damage or plus one armor or increase his movement by two inches on a jog or a sprint his legendary play, I won't even try to pronounce that, uh, allows him to gain momentum whenever he spends influence, up to 3 momentum. So this is important when he has a scoring opportunity and you still don't have momentum, he can actually gain the momentum needed to take a shot. Midas has a deceptively aggressive playbook. It may not look that much but because of the guild ball result on a one and the double guild ball result on a two his true replication ability is very potent now true replication is one of the reasons you're going to be taking midas it allows him to steal an enemy character play and use it more effectively i don't think any other model has a momentous guild ball result on a one and so when he steals Scything Blow, it can be very devastating. Now, if Midas gets a Scything Blow from the likes of, let's say, Gutter, and the Union attempts to gang up on him, he can actually use the Scything Blow to deal 3 damage to each of these opposing models in every attack. So imagine if he has 7 influence on him. That's 21 damage each. That's enough to take out everybody. The double guild ball on a, the, the double guild ball on a 3 is not as potent. But it can still be very effective. Imagine if you only need 3 successes to hit an unmasking. Or using um, Kraken's release the Kraken on a 1. It can be very very devastating for an opponent it can ruin their plans uh, and that's what makes Midas such a superhero 
The last two character plays of Midas is not as interesting as True Replication, but they are useful nonetheless. Heavy Burden can ruin uh, an activation of an opposing character by imposing a minus 4 minus 4 movement penalty as well as reducing their dice pool on character plays by 2. Clone is another of my favorite abilities. Uh, and what it does is it creates a shield or a bubble around Midas so that he ignores the next attacker character play and then allows him to do a 2 inch dodge. So it really helps with his survivability and the longer Midas can stay in the action the better it is for your team and that's your superhero Midas. Next up, we have the Striker, Vitriol. She's my second favorite model in this team, and um, I'll show you guys why. Vitriol has an impressive movement of 6-9, and this is further improved by her character trait, Cover of Darkness. Now, this means that when she starts in cover, she can actually move an extra two inches on a jog or a sprint. She has a decent tack of five and a very good kick of four, eight. So she's rolling four dice and her reach is eight inches. Now, on a sprint, and if she starts in cover, she can move 11. And that means her total threat range for scoring is 19 inches that's huge she also has 5 plus defense and 0 armor pretty much like Midas um, but normally she's in cover because she has the ability to create her own cover using smoke bomb and she also has clone so these uh, abilities help help her stay on the table despite only having 12 life she also has Killed in Shadow. Um, that means when she's attacking someone in cover, she rolls an extra two dice. So this negates the cover bonus given on defense. And she also has Hidden Damage, which means she deals an extra one damage uh, when she's attacking someone in cover. If you take a look at her playbook, it's not that aggressive. She does have a tackle on a one, which makes stealing the ball a breeze for Vitriol. Uh, and then, I guess if she's in cover, she can do significant damage, dealing one damage on a one, two damage on a two, and three damage on a four. Um, but normally, I don't use her to uh, take out other people, but to score lots of goals. And that's Vitriol. Next up, we have Mercury and Calculus. Now, these two models have very similar stats and they also have uh, similar roles on the pitch. Mercury spreads burning, Calculus spreads poison, and they both lay down area of effect attacks that help protect Midas uh, from the opposing team. Mercury and Calculus have very similar uh, stat lines. They have a decent move of 5-8, TAC 4. Mercury being slightly better at kicking with 4-6 uh, compared to Calculus's 3-6. They both have a defense of 4 plus and 1 armor. Now in terms of influence, Calculus contributes 2 and can take in 4, while Mercury contributes 1 and can take in 4. Um, th this might seem like a drawback, but he can actually gain an extra influence to contribute uh, when he's near Flask. Both of them also have an aura which spreads uh, their condition around people who uh, enter within 1 inch of them. So Mercury with his burning spirit spreads the burning condition, while Calculus with the poisonous flu fumes spread the uh, poison condition. And tactical advice flask from for Mercury is um, 
the ability I was talking about which allows him to gain extra influence both to contribute and to um, and to use when he's within four inches of flask their playbooks are nothing to write home about it's really their character plays that give them value mercury has fire blast which is a direct damage spell um, sorry flame jet is a direct damage spell their playbooks are nothing to write home about it's really their character plays that allow them to shine mercury has fire blast which is the area effect spell um, and it can reach up to eight inches and then you can you get to roll two dice for each model affected by it uh, it deals two damage and spreads burning as well as uh, spreading burning to models that enter the area effect later he also has flame jet which deals three damage and um, gives the burning condition it has a slightly uh, lower range at six inches but because you're spending three influence to use it you also get to roll three dice calculus on the other hand has the ability to blind her opponents um, blind got heavily nerfed but it's still pretty useful it um, it gives a minus two penalty to attack minus two minus two to kick and minus two minus two to move it can ruin a model's activation if it hits although it's not that reliable given that it only costs one and you can only use it once per turn that means you only roll one dice and if you miss that's it noxious blast is her counterpart to um, fire blast it does pretty much the same thing except it spreads poison rather than burning at 15 health these two usually stay at the back line providing aoe support to the rest of your squad they are the backbone of the alchemist guild and they enable the condition game which is something you can fall back on if Midas isn't doing too well this big fella is catalyst and I'm not that fond of him but if you're playing the condition game he can be pretty devastating to your opponent so catalyst has a movement of 5 8 pretty average um, attack of 6 uh, kick of 2 and 6 obviously you don't want him kicking the ball he has a defense of 3 and an arm 1. He has 2 influence to contribute and can take in up to 3. His playbook is underwhelming, particularly because you want him to do a lot of damage. And yet his damage results aren't momentous. However, it does help him trigger his character plays, which can be useful at times. His first character play is Intensify. It can either cost 2 or you can trigger it from the Guild Ball playbook result. It's an area effect ability. It's a Pulse 3 ability that deals 2 damage to enemy models suffering conditions. Now, if you're playing the condition game, this can be really powerful. Otherwise, it's it seems lackluster. Uh, he also has the rabid animal ability uh, which basically gives an enemy model a minus four minus four penalty to movement and the poison condition so he can apply poison and then intensify but sometimes that's a waste of actions however if you're able to spread different conditions uh, across the board uh, catalyst can be really powerful uh, if the person he's attacking has burning then he deals one extra damage if the target is poison he rolls two extra dice and then if the target is bleeding the target loses one armor so he can be quite a beat stick but it's conditional pardon the pun catalyst also boasts a high 
27 hit points. Um, but for a big model, he only has a melee zone of 1. So he does have the tendency of getting ganged up on. Uh, again, not a fan, but sometimes Catalyst has its place. Last but not the least, we have the mascot Flask. Now, Flask also benefits a lot from the condition game. Um, and he can be more aggressive than other mascots given the right scenario. As you can see, Flask has a move of 5-7, a tack of 2, a kick of 1-4. You don't want Flask to kick the ball. Defense of 3 but has an arm of 2. Uh, he also has, contributes 1 influence and can take 2 in. Now, it's important to note that because he has a tack of 2 and his playbook is also only 2 columns wide, uh, on a charge, he can wrap pretty easily, and that means that he can actually use Intensify a lot. I've had a game where he wrapped three times, and so he dealt eight damage to everyone who had the condition around him. This took out a number of models. Um, I remember that because Midas stole dirty knives and was just spreading poison across the board. Flask is also light-footed, just like Midas, so again, that ignores the movement penalties of rough ground. He also has the overheat ability, so when he gets taken out, he explodes and everybody gets hit 3 damage and given the burning condition. His last character trait allows him to pop cover. It's a 3-inch AoE that centers on Flask and... It gives everybody in contact with that area of effect cover. So very useful with Vitriol at the start of the game just to help her push forward. Pretty much like any other mascot, uh, he has 10 health, pretty low, but they're not designed to uh, absorb a lot of damage anyway. So yeah, that's Flask and um, that actually wraps up all the players of the Alchemist Guild. So there you have it, that's the Alchemist Guild. Now, I mentioned that I'm not a fan of Catalyst, uh, and so if you're not averse to um, hiring union players, I would suggest that you replace Catalyst with Mist, who's basically an extra vitriol on the team. This allows you to spread the opposing team by having threats uh, on both flanks. If you enjoy limiting your opponent's movement, if you enjoy manipulating them and uh, forcing them into making bad decisions, um, I suggest you give the Alchemist a try. Particularly if you're like me and enjoy uh, having one model really uh, have a dominating performance over all others. Uh, again, I'm not that much of a teamwork kind of guy, but sometimes... Uh, the opportunity does present itself and the alchemists can be very synergistic with one another if you play them as a team um, They're pretty powerful if you choose to play Midas as um, as a hero It's also very powerful as well. So it's a team that has um, two modes of play off the bat and I really had so much fun playing with them uh, and so if you're looking for a guild, I suggest you give these alchemists a try. I'll see you next time, guys. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, War Jeepney.